Pat, I'd like to ask what message you have for, for the media and folks from out of town that might see this video who might be inclined to want to visit Newtown on or around uh, 1214 anniversary or in the weeks to follow. We've been asking that the media and others who might have an interest in visiting us to please give us time and space uh, to be alone and to be together as a community. Uh, what, we, what we're feeling is that the, the intention of the media to serve us and honor us uh, really becomes overwhelming, uh, that we are unable to proceed in our journey of healing very effectively when we're confronted so consistently with, with the world's attention. We really need that time to be alone uh, with each other. So our request is please, uh, we'll make ourselves available to you prior up until that time, but from that time, um, give, us, give us some space, give us the opportunity to recover together uh, as a community. We're all connected in ways to this tragedy, and we need to know that we have each other to rely on without the fear of being confronted with a camera or a microphone. You appeared on, uh, on Connecticut's uh, CBS uh, network over the weekend and uh, articulated that message and today, just a few moments before we uh, sat down, we learned that that uh, television station is committed to not sending a crew to Newtown, not being here. I would imagine if, uh, if a challenge was to be made to all members of the media, that would be uh, something that you would embrace. Yes, I do embrace that. Naturally, I've heard from a number of media outlets that they're taking very seriously our town's request for peace and, uh, and to be left alone for a while. Dr. Reed, what's the most important thing for the families and members of the Newtown School community to know as the anniversary of the tragedy approaches? Well, I think all of us that uh, are involved in the aftermath of this tragedy Humbleness is another word that, that, that comes to my mind. Humble because we're embarked on a journey that we've never been on before uh, as a community or as a school system, whether it's trying to put uh, uh, a complex uh, support system in place, including mental health. And I think if you take the, hum the humility or the humbleness uh, as a way of saying we're committed to trying uh, if we make a mistake, we're going to learn from it. Our commitment is to get better and better in meeting the needs of the kids first and foremost and our staff. And to understanding that that's the way real improvement occurs. Uh, and if I could just say one other thing, John, I, I've been very honored to have an opportunity to be back in a, in a modest position of, of leadership within the school system. And this school system and most of the people in it have turned inward since the tragedy. And by inward, I mean uh, they've been very concerned uh, about exposing themselves to the, the regional or national media to become a 30-second uh, snippet on uh, a TV station. And I realize that that's caused a, a bit of a vacuum. People have chosen to keep their stories of, uh, of individual efforts and, and, and heroism on that day to themselves. And, and that's created a little bit of a vacuum. And, and I, I really feel I owe it particularly to the Sandy Hook staff just to say that from what I know and understand about those people, that while they've been very direct about preserving the privacy of themselves and, and of the school experience for the kids, uh, I think it's important for the community to understand that they experienced uh, things that they never in their lives dreamed they would experience. They've showed remarkable fortitude and courage and while no one is perfect in what we're trying to do, uh, I can look at you with the utmost sincerity and, and say that our staff, and, uh, and I guess in particular to this particular situation we're talking about, the Sandy Hook staff are, are people who are very near and dear to my heart and I admire very much. Chief Keogh, we'll return to the question of uh, potential media and well-wishers uh, well uh, 
coming into the community uh, on or, or soon after 1214. What should the media and any visitors expect as far as law enforcement presence or uh, the, the direction that uh, your staff and, and uh, law enforcement uh, partners may give uh, if media and well-wishers arrive in town on 1214? Well, you're going to see a strong law enforcement presence um, that day and the day before and the day after uh, for that entire weekend. Um, the direction we're going to try to, to give everybody is that we're going to try to be as normal as we can on any given weekend. Okay, that we're going to try to you know have normal traffic flows, normal pedestrian traffic flows in our community. So we're going to try to do as best the best of the job we can to make it as normal as possible. But we're going to have you're going to see the police presence. Existing within our within our community, whether it be in Saint Nick Center, uh, the, at, at Main Street, um, but we're going to we're going to we're going to try to shield our community, shield our families uh, from any extraneous pressures. Thank you, Cody. How is the Newtown Youth Academy continuing to respond to the community's needs as twelve fourteen approaches, and how will it continue to respond and support the community during the ensuing winter months? Um, I, I know our intent is to do whatever we possibly can to support our community. I think as we're moving forward, we're trying to identify the purpose of their actions. We're trying to find sustainable programming that actually can make a difference. Uh, and while we have multiple things in, in place right now going, going forward, uh, I'd say our, our immediate goal right now is being available to the community on 12-14 and creating uh, an environment which we've done before in the past, which basically is just a facility wide open to the children, to the members of our community, the teachers, coaches, uh, family members, anyone in Newtown that wants to come in for both structured programming and free open play. We're, we've been joined by Rev. Reverend Matthew Krebin, uh, representing uh, the Newtown Congregational Church. Uh, he's been very visible in the community. Uh, two questions, uh, Reverend Krebin. First of all, uh, what are your plans for 12-14? What will you be doing on, on the uh, anniversary of this tragedy? Well, uh, I'll be leading my congregation, and our congregation will be having a service of remembrance uh, in the morning at 9 a.m. Uh, I also, as part of the Interfaith Clergy Association, as the coordinator for that, we have uh, published and will be publishing uh, activities uh, and services that are being offered by a multitude of the faith communities here in Newtown, um, especially on that day and also times of for folks to come just uh, if they want to come and sit in our sanctuaries. Uh, most uh, Many of the faith communities will have open times for people just to come and, and be in a, in a space and some have some of us will have like that. We'll have folks that will be available mm -hmm. to talk with folks um, during the daytime as well if, if people just feel they want to do some reflection and conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and from a more one-on-one uh, -on -one level and, and in your capacity representing the greater faith-based leadership in Newtown, uh, what are some of the ways that these spiritual leaders in each of their various communities plan to respond uh, more on an individual level to constituents who may be in need or have a, a greater level of concern or issue during these weeks uh, around 12-14? Well, I think what we have done is what we'll continue to do, which is try and let people know that we are available um, and reach out to people we know might be particularly uh, facing some challenges uh, during this time. And um, also work collaboratively with uh, other organizations and agencies within the community, uh, continue to try and build bridges amongst uh, various aspects of the life of the community. We know that um, all of us need to uh, work together and care for uh, you know, families that are vulnerable need um, spiritual care. They also need help uh, and support through the school district. They need help through uh, potentially through uh, other therapeutic um, endeavors. And so for us, we really want to look at uh, people holistically and uh, be aware and conscious. One of the things that we're conscious of, especially around the anniversary, is um, with all of the attention, the temptation for many people is uh, because they're maybe concerned about media attention and, and other um, realities uh, associated with this anniversary, that some folks will not seek out um, support 
Uh, and so uh, the clergy are concerned about uh, isolation amongst folks at a time when uh, isolation usually is not helpful uh, as people move through grief. And so we want to try as much as possible to let people know that, uh, that if they need, um, need care or connection and they can't find that or feel that that's going to be very difficult in a larger setting, that, uh, that we are available or can work with others to try and be helpful to them to make sure that no one uh, feels isolated and cut off. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you.